Okay, so thank you very much for the invitation. I'm sorry that I'm giving this talk online as well. At least I'm not alone here. Uh, so, um, so I have to apologize that um, there won't be, I mean, in the talk itself, there won't be, there will be a lot of sort of representation theory, geometric representation theory, and actually just geometry, but there won't be any kind of enumerative geometry. Although, uh, what I'm going to talk about is um, uh, supposedly very much related to at least some other aspects which are discussed in this school. For, so for instance, uh, it's all motivated by some work of uh, physicists and uh, in particular, for instance, the, uh, some paper of Witten, paper of Mikhailov and Witten, which uh, discusses Havana homology a lot. So in particular, so there should be some connection with Havana homology, but I absolutely don't understand what it is. So, okay, so let me uh, briefly explain what the plan of the talk is. So for about half of the talk, I'll be reviewing some known results. Um, I'm sorry? Okay. So uh, I'm going to start with a review of some very basic thing in geometric representation theory review of geometric Sataki equivalence. <laughs> then uh, I'm going to uh, discuss another equivalence which is kind of similar to geometric Sataki, but which is again, uh, I think pretty well known to uh, uh, for, well, to sort of people working in geometric representation theory, but maybe less well known to other people. And uh, uh, this is what's called capital E, uh, uh, which is an abbreviation for fundamental local equivalence. This is a terminology that Dennis Gaze is using. And uh, I'll maybe comment on the terminology when we get to it. And then we'll discuss Gaiota conjectures, which should be thought of as some analogs of fundamental local equivalence. Uh, and then, well, if there is time left, which, you know, I'm not sure about that, then, uh, 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 then uh, I'll uh, talk about idea of proofs. Um, and this is a uh, recent joint work with uh, Finkelberg and Trafkin, which has just been posted on archive yesterday. And um, so I should also say that I have given a very, sim in some sense, a very similar talk also in IGS, I think about two and a half years ago. But at that time, at that point, everything was just 100% conjectural. And now we actually have a lot of theorems. So I'll try to uh, sort of kind of emphasize that. But um, again, I'm going to begin with, uh, uh, I'm going to begin with review of some known results. And uh, one thing uh, that I want, to, another thing I want to emphasize before I proceed is that, uh, well, I mean, in the end of the day, I'm going to get this to get, get to this Gaiota conjectures, and then maybe we'll discuss the proofs of some special cases of them. But uh, uh, but the point is that for people working in geometric representation theory, this these conjectures themselves uh, sort of quite uh, strange and I would say unexpected. And uh, I think that mathematicians would never be able to guess the, uh, those conjectures and physicists somehow can derive them from some kind of string theory calculations. And I'm absolutely unable to follow those string theory calculations, but somehow it's, uh, I think, pretty remarkable that, uh, um, uh, that by using this kind of very mysterious string theory calculations, uh, physicists can produce some conjectures which are kind of absolutely mathematical and also somehow uh, very reminiscent of some other things in geometric representation theory. But again, mathematicians somehow never did anything like that. All right, so this, this was kind of a preview. So now let me uh, start uh, uh, this plan. 
uh, implementing this plan. So first of all, uh, what is geometric syntactic equivalence? Well, so we work over uh, algebraic writers over C, so everything over C. And uh, so we fix G, which in the end of the day is going to be GLN, but for now it's going to be just any connected reductive algebraic group, well, over C. Um, and um, so the basic object that somehow which will appear on the geometric side for us is the affine Grassmannian of G. And so the affine Grassmannian of G is, uh, well, I guess uh, has been discussed in Joel's uh, talks, but let me still just fix the notation. So I, I'm going to turn by K the field of Laurent power series and inside, inside there is a ring O, which is the ring of Taylor series. And then uh, we can see that they find Grassmannian of G, which is the quotient G of K mod G of O. And uh, this, uh, well, again, I guess Joel discussed it. Oh, uh, and uh, so this is a uh, so infinite dimensional object, but it's a pretty nice infinite dimensional object. So it's a, uh, it's a union of uh, uh, projective, fine dimensional projective varieties. And in particular, uh, the group G of K still acts there on the left, in particular G of O acts, and the orbits of G of O are fine dimensional. So in particular, you can see that the category uh, of uh, perverse G of O equivariant sheaves on the fine grass mine. So this is some category, this is some C linear abelian category. And uh, mm, well, and this turns out to be in a natural way, it turns out to be a tensor category or symmetric monoidal category. So this is kind of, you can write it as perverse sheaves on the coalition, on the double coalition G of K mod G of O mod G of O. And this is, again, this is kind of, I think the Joel more or less discussed something very close to that. So somehow you can use convolution, some kind of convolution product here to uh, to define the tensor uh, the ten, the tensor structure, and it turns out that it's all going to be symmetric and uh, you know this duality and so on. And the basic uh, basic theorem here is that is the following. So kind of theorem which is. Uh, which is what is called geometric subtract equivalence is that this category as a tensor category is equivalent to the category of finite dimensional representations of, uh, of the group G check where G check is, is the Langlands dual group. So this is the group whose root datum is dual to that of G. But uh, pretty soon we're going to just uh, uh, switch to the case when G is uh, 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 GLN. So let me just remind that if G is the group GLN, then the dual group is also G. So GLN is self-dual. Okay, so let me first say why, the, I mean, let me first mention that this is a very good equivalent. So it's, so it's a starting point for uh, a lot of things uh, in, uh, well, in geometric representation theory or in, or in algebraic geometry. So again, again, I mean, uh, so this is very, uh, for example, important for, uh, uh, for Joel's course, but um, also, I mean, this is, this is really the starting point for what's called uh, uh, geometric Langlands correspondence. And in fact, this is a, Kind of categorification of some kind of classical set like isomorphism, which is a starting point for usual language correspondence. So this is a kind of very good equivalence. But uh, instead of talking why it is good, let me talk why it is bad. So, uh, so disadvantages of this. So the, I'm going to name two disadvantages. There's a kind of a, um, sort of categorical disadvantage and uh, and uh, uh, and there's a kind of representation threat. 
So uh, the first disadvantage is that it does not work, it, well, doesn't work as stated on the derived level. for derived categories. What I mean, when, uh, so uh, in other words, I want to say that you can consider the equivariant derived category of defined Grassmannian. So this is, we never have a group acting on a variety and everything here is kind of essentially finite dimensional. Uh, you can talk about uh, the corresponding covariant derived category and that thing is absolutely not equivalent the derived category of represent of finite. Well, actually, when I say here representation of Chichak, I mean uh, representation of Chichak as um, um, as an algebraic group, so just fine dimensional algebraic representations. And and Chichak is a reductive group, so its category representations is uh, uh, is semi simple, and so its derived category is pretty trivial. But the derived category of uh, 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 of uh, um, Geophoric variant sheaves in the Frank Grassmann is, is, is quite non trivial. So, um, so, so these things are not equivalent. So in fact, it is known what this thing is equivalent to, and this is called, called derisive equivalence, which I actually uh, almost won't use. Well, I won't formally use it, but let me just, for the sake of completeness, let me mention what this is. So, this thing is equivalent to the following thing. To I should take, well, okay, what I'm going to say is going to be a slight lie, but I mean, it's. Uh, uh, well, let me put uh, maybe bounded derived category here, uh, and uh, and then this will be, uh, and uh, uh, well, I need, I, if I put some finite conditions, then what I'm going to say will actually be true. So she, here I should put uh, I should take the Lie algebra of the Langlois dual group. I should put it in homological degree negative two. Regard this as a DG algebra with trivial differentials, trivial differential, then should consider the derived category of modules over this DG algebra. So whenever we have a DG differential graded algebra, you can consider this differential graded modules and you can take, take the corresponding derived category. And I want them to be sort of, let me notation. Well, and also I maybe want to consider here, sorry, uh, finally generated modules. And uh, here I want to consider G check equivariant ones, which is which is which just means stuff. So I'll just denote it like this. But what it really means is that I can see the modules on which also the group G check acts, and the action is compatible with the adjoint action on the algebra. So uh, so this thing is, you know, it's not it's not a derived category of any abelian category essentially, and it's definitely not a derived category of a semi simple. So, um, so the derived syntactic equivalence is kind of much more complicated, although, although it's also extremely important for many purposes. And in fact, uh, uh, for this um, story of Coulomb branches, it's also extremely important, uh, but that's not what I want to talk about. So somehow, again, let me now view this as a drawback in the sense that somehow I have this equivalence between abelian categories and I would like to have the, uh, I mean, I would like to have a sort of slightly different setup where, which would extend to draft categories as well. So that's kind of maybe a minor drawback. A more important drawback for me is that this uh, uh, geometric satake does not extend literally to uh, quantum groups. Well, okay, so this is not a mathematical statement. Uh, to, well, let me write it like this. Let me write to wrap Q G check. That means that I can see the representations of the corresponding point. point, point. Again, uh, does not extend mean, means that it's, uh, you know, it's kind of no known uh, natural way to extend it. And, uh, so now I'm passing to number number two in my plan. So I'm passing to this fundamental local equivalence. Um, uh, and the fundamental local equivalence is a is a is a is a dip is a different equivalence of similar nature. Uh, but uh, it will be an equivalence where both of these problems will be cured. And uh, so jumping a little bit ahead, I should say that this Gaiola conjectures will be uh, sort of 
it's a set of conjectures which will also extend, which will make, uh, which will extend this fundamental local equivalence. So, fundamental local equivalence will be a special case for conjectures actually for the group GLN. Um, okay, so now, any questions so far? Okay, so now. Uh, sorry. What was, uh, what was Q? What does Q stand for there? I, I, I what is Q? Well, I mean Q. And it, I mean, okay. So this is uh, this is this is quantum group oh, okay. representations of quantum group. Well, Q is typically for quantum groups. It's a number. Although actually, if you want to do things canonically, it's not really a number. It's it's some C star valued invariant form. On the on the weight on the co-weight letters, but but you know if G is a simple group, then Q is just a non, it's a non-zero number. So this is just representation of the corresponding quantum group. So quantum uh, so this category of representation of quantum group, it's a it's a deformation of the category of representation of G check, it's, and a deformation in the world of what's called braided monoidal categories. So it's no longer symmetric. So it's it's a tensor, but it's kind of tensor category, but it's not it's not um, it's not symmetric. So so it's uh, well it's braided. So if you Consider some v tends to w is natural isomorphic to w tends to v, but the square of this of the sequence is not one. So uh, and so so this this kind of natural uh, thing and, the, and 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 so we'd like to so here we kind of something have some kind of geometric realization of uh, of the tensor category of uh, G check representations. Want to extend it to quantum groups, and somehow this way we can't. Let me uh, say how we can do it. And this is also very important for uh, geometrical angles, although I'm not, I'm not going to say anything about geometrical angles in this talk. So uh, the story is the following. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to look kind of slightly different. So, so let uh, U inside G be uh, a maximal unipotent subgroup. So say if G is GLN, we can just take upper triangular, uh, upper triangular matrices with one on the deck. And so let also chi from uh, U to the additive group be a generic character, generic additive character. So example, if G is GLN, you can take U to be, uh, these matrices with one in the diagonal, zero below the diagonal, and anything above the diagonal. And then typical choice of chi is uh, the summation of all a i i plus one. So it's a homomorphism. And uh, uh, well, you can also take any linear combination of those, but with non-zero coefficients. So it's important that all coefficients for every i is non-zero. Then the character is generic. So choose a generic character, and uh, 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 then uh, uh, then we can consider U of K, and we can consider the character let's called uh, chi hat from U of K also to the additive group, and this is just by given by the formula that chi of U of T is equal to the residue at T equal to zero. Uh, chi of u of t dt, something like this. And so now, uh, if um, now we can consider the following guy. So first before q, but then we're going to introduce q. So we can see the the Whitaker category of the affine Grassmannian. And this is by definition the category. Let me say, let me put away the derived category of U of K, comma, chi hat equivariant sheaves on a fine grass mark. Now let me note that here, even to define this, have to work a little bit uh, because I mean the difference between this and uh, uh, and what we did before with geometric set I guess that here the orbits of the group U of chi are. U of K, sorry, uh, are not um, are not fine dimensional, They're actually infinite dimensional. So somehow, uh, so this the, the 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 this setup is kind of 
more interdimensional than before, but sort of modern science uh, knows how to handle such situations uh, very efficiently. So some of there's actually a rigorous definition. Moreover, what is actually much less obvious is that this category is also a tensor category. And here, I mean, here the problem is that there's no, I mean, but but the, the tensor product is not going to be given by convolution. The, 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 there's no kind of convolution here. So, uh, uh, so this is a, again, tensor yeah. category. But here you will actually have to believe me how to define. Uh, well, let me just say that for people who know this word, the tensor structure. comes from fusion rather than convolution. Yeah, I should also say that when I say derived category, so, so here, Mel, actually, when you have a unipotent group with an additive character acting on some space, then when you want to consider sheaves occurring with respect to this character, then either actually, instead of sheaves, you have to use D modules or, uh, or you have to work with, uh, uh, instead of complex numbers, you have to work over fine field, for example. Because the point is that uh, usually, I mean, the point is that this additive character defines some, you want, you want this additive character to define some uh, one dimensional uh, local system on your group and uh, with some multiplic multiplicativity properties. And so in the world of D models, we can actually do this if you work over complex numbers. So let me do it for U itself. So if you have chi from U to G A, then uh, you can consider D module, which is pullback respect to chi, sort of exponential D module on uh, 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 On the affine line, on the on the additive group, and that's that's going to be one-dimensional local system on U, which sort of uh, which has some factorization property, and uh, so therefore you can talk about sheaves equivalent with respect to, or D modules rather equivalent with respect to this thing. Or uh, another sort of equivalent way is to work over finite field instead of complex numbers and work with lattic sheaves, and then uh, you can use the Art and Schreier sheave, uh, the pullback sorry of the Art and Schreier sheave with respect to chi. And then, uh, so, this, so this is about what, what is meant by this, uh, uh, by this category of sheaves equivalent or D models equivalent with respect to this group. So, so I, mean, I mean, most people are used to a uh, notion of sheaves equivalent with respect to action of a group. So there's a, uh, so the claim is that there is a kind of uh, enhancement of that. So if you have a, uh, either additive or multiplicative character of the group, you can actually uh, uh, talk about sheaves uh, equivalent to the spectra action of this group uh, with a character. And if, if this is an additive character, then either you should do it in the language of D modules or should work with the lattice sheaves or finite. So let me not worry about this. Uh, so, and the tensor structure, so the tensor structure is defined in such a way. So we actually work, the fine gross man is related to the formal disk. And uh, uh, in order to define the tensor structure, we need to use an actual algebraic curve instead of formal disk and let some points uh, move over that curve and, and, and let, let them collide and so on. So this is kind of typical uh, story of fusion, which I don't have time to explain, but again, you will have to just believe me that uh, there's a, there's a there is some tensor structure here, but it's kind of defined. Yeah, I can actually define it for the for geophoric variant sheaves as well. And uh, for for the abelian category, I actually get the same tensor structure, but in the derived category, we actually get a different structure. So, but okay, let me not go into this. Mm. Um, all right, and so kind of Thor's theorem is that this Whitaker category of the Grassmannian is now equivalent again, well, I mean, I'm using the derived category already, so it's just the derived category of, again, representations of fiction. So it sounds as this Whitaker category is much simpler than, uh, on the derived level, it's much simpler than, than the Sataki category, because even on the derived level, mm -hmm. it's the same as representation of Chichen. So now, where's the quantum group here? So the claim is that you can actually upgrade this to quantum. So let me talk about this. Any question before that?
All right, so a way to quantum groups is, well, again, we're going to have an equivalence of, well, braided monoidal categories. And then, well, it's easy to say what we're going to have on the right. On the right, we're going to have derived category of this representation. So let's fix, we fix Q and C star. Uh, so, um, We can see the derived category of representation of the corresponding quantum group. Yeah, I mean, maybe before I, before I go to quantum group, let me say that you know this is includes of derived level, but it but it also induces the corresponding abelian equivalence in the sense that this equivalence between derived categories is compatible with natural T structures on both sides. So if you can see the perverse sheaves on the left and just representations on the right, you get equivalence between these abelian categories. So, uh, and the same is going to be true in this Q case. And so here, let me write this thing like this and uh, let me just explain uh, what I mean by this. So what this thing, uh, what with Q is. So this is, uh, this is the category of U of chi comma chi hat equivariant sheaves on some uh, determinant line bundle L over the Grassmannian. So the Grassmannian actually, well, okay, so here we, we gain some orders which I don't want to discuss. So if G is simple, then it will be just one. I mean, the question is what is Q? I mean, uh, uh, so if, if I think about Q as a number, then uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's, I can really think about Q as a number, which is simple. Otherwise I may, may have several parameters Q. In fact, somehow if you try to think what Q is canonically, then uh, it's actually some choice of some bilinear form on the, uh, on the Lie algebra and the such term line bundles is also parameterized by this bilinear forms. But uh, if G is a simple group, then you can actually think about this number and uh, some determinant line bundle. Well, I mean, actually I have to remove with the zero section. The reception removed. Uh, on, I mean, when I say on the line bundle, I mean on some, I mean on some total space of this line bundle, uh, which have monodromy Q along the fibers. So you have this L minus the zero section over the grass mine. There's some kind of, well, for the simple group, there's some canonical line bundle. Otherwise, it depends on some choices. And so here, well, it's a line bundle with zero section removed. So every fiber here, every fiber here is C star. And so we can see the sheaves, we can extend some kind of twisted sheaves. So we can see the sheaves in the, uh, well, not, I mean, we can do it for any, uh, for any variety of the line bundle, you can consider Q twisted sheaves. That, that means that we can see the sheaves not on the variety, but on the total space of this line bundle with, uh, without the zero section, which have monodromy Q. Uh, I mean, the fundamental group of the, I mean, so such, I mean, they're, they're going to be uh, on every fiber, it, this thing is going to be a local system and uh, the monodromy is going to be Q. So this again, this is like extremely general procedure in uh, uh, which is used in geometric representation theory all the time. For many, for many, for many purposes. So, um, and uh, uh, so, and then let me go back. So then we have this equivalence, which is again, this is a braided monoidal equivalence. Now, if you haven't seen this before, and, and if you're following what I'm talking about, you might ask, why couldn't I do this for the original Sataki equivalence? I mean, I could have tried uh, to take uh, uh, also geophoric variant perverse, uh, geophoric variant perverse sheaves again on the total space of this line bundle with monodromy Q. And uh, the question is that, and the claim is that that, that would not work. And uh, so for instance, if Q is not a root of unity, it turns out that if you consider geophoric variant sheaves, then there will be essentially no geophoric variant sheaves uh, uh, with monodromy Q. Almost all of them. I mean, there will be just uh, well, if G is simple. There will be uh, there will be just one some kind of trivial. I mean, the, this category will be just a category of vector spaces. 
Uh, so, so somehow it happens that uh, if you can see the, uh, if you do it with Joe Fuller equivalence, if you, if, you, if you can see this Q twisting, then the category becomes much smaller. I mean, for, it's, for if Q is root of unity, it will become just smaller. If Q is generic, it will just essentially collapse. And, uh, but for this Whitaker category, that's not the case and we get this default. Okay, any questions? So this, is, uh, this was the review of this fundamental local equivalence. And uh, now I should say that maybe I, I should, uh, some, uh, so this was uh, this uh, FLE, uh, FLE was a conjecture of Jacob Luria. And then, then the, and then was proved by uh, Gaze Gray for generic Q, and then by Gaze Gray and Lysenko, and independently, I think by Jetao Young. for all Q. All right. Okay, so I'm I'm exactly more or less at half time. So um, um, so this was uh, this was a review of some known results. Uh, so now uh, let me go. Unless there are any questions, let me go to Gaiota conjectures. May I ask a question? Uh, sure. Could you go back to that statement of the equivalence of uh, categories of the last one that you had? Which one? This one? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so th there you have just sheaves, coherent sheaves, or w w which sheaves? Perverse sheaves? No, no, there, there are no coherent sheaves anywhere. Yeah, no, okay, no. So it's perverse no, no, coherent, coherent sheaves do not appear here, here anywhere. Yeah. Sheaves, sheaves means constructible. Sheaves, or actually, I mean, I said that. I mean, when you work with, with this Whitaker category, I either should work with constructible sheaves um, of a finite field, or I should work with corresponding D models. Because I mean, the ones that they kind of, the, the sheaves uh, say of a finite field, they, they're going to be not tame. So in particular, or the corresponding D models will not have regular singularities. So, but again, this is, mm. this is a mild, this, this is not a very important point. Uh, and again, I mean, I mean, even, I mean, before that, so, so, for, okay, so here, so here, for instance, in this equivalence, uh, uh, so I mean, this, in this definition, same thing happens. And then, you know, if you can see this this uh, theorem, then here all sheaves are constructible. And actually, if you go back to this Sataki equivalence, then again, uh, here on the left, you can see the construct. I mean, when you work with perverse sheaves, I mean, it means that you you construct you uh, uh, you work with constructible sheaves. Mm -hmm. So, so it's rather, you know, in some kind of more general setups related to geometric angles, you have usually a kind of a typical situation that you have a sort of uh, um, constructible side and coherent side. And so, I mean, you know, here, if you look for instance at this equals, then this is, this is the left-hand side and, and the, the right-hand side representation of G-check, you should think about it as, as coherent side. So it's, it's rather, because it's actually coherent sheaves on the stack point mod G-check. And uh, uh, so, and uh, so, for instance, if you look at this derived Sataki equivalence here, then this is also sheaves on actually coherent sheaves on actually some derived stack. So, so somehow, usually, it's a kind of typical situation. We have some equivalence where on the left you have some constructible sheaves, and on the right you have some coherent sheaves and so on. And uh, uh, but in this Q case, somehow, it's slightly different because you don't. I mean, this this. Coherent side becomes sort of um, well, it becomes kind of Q twisted. So I mean, it's not very really coherent shift or anything anymore. Anyhow, so uh, so let's proceed together. So so now uh, the idea is that uh, uh, so the Yoto produce some uh, so can. Uh, uh, okay, Yoto. Defined 
so let me actually um, sorry let me let me uh, see one uh, let me uh, address one notation so fix now two numbers two natural numbers m and n and i assume that uh, uh, m is less or equal than uh, and just for simplicity. Then Gayoda produced the following. Gayoda produced a geometric category. By geometric category, again, I mean it will be some category of some kind of sheaves on. Uh, Mm, some kind of a fine Grassmannian, produce a geometric category uh, uh, such that, uh, which is equivalent, let me say it like this, which is which is conjectural equivalent equivalent to the following thing, to representations Q based on the some quantum group, but this time it's going to be quantum super. So this is the super world. So first of all, before Q, you can consider the super group, kind of algebraic super group, GLM. And this is automorphisms of the super vector space C sort of M N. So this is a, a, a super vector space, which has even dimension M and odd dimension N. And uh, so this is some, you can consider that super group photomorphisms. And there's a, there's a well-known, well, maybe less, uh, not super well-known, but uh, kind of known at least um, uh, Q deformation of that as well. Let me just uh, 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 here's assume for simplistic use generic actually. I mean, you can actually do it for non-generic Q as well, uh, but, uh, uh, but you have to be, I mean, it will also be true for non-generic you if you define this quantum group carefully. So, um, uh, so you have to choose. You have to work with some particular form of the quantum group. And uh, so, I'll uh, maybe specialize to the case uh, 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 to the case uh, m equal to n minus one uh, because that case in that case will be it will be the simplest to explain. But before I do this, let me say that. Uh, if, uh, well, I mean, we're working here with uh, uh, arbitrary M and N, but so if M is equal to zero, then all the super part goes away. So then uh, GL MN is equal to just GLN. So we're supposed to recover the same thing we had before. And so this Gaiota ca category, so this, Will become just with this Whitaker category of the fine Grassmannian of GLN. But I'm I'm going to look at the uh, at the other extreme. Maybe not the real extreme. I mean, the the, the, the real other extreme will be m equal to n. But uh, it turns out that the easiest thing to easiest example to explain for me will be m uh, uh, n equal to uh, uh, n. N minus one. So it turns out that, so let me explain what happens in this case. Uh, and it will actually not look, at, uh, it, will, it will look pretty differently from, uh, uh, from this Whitaker category, but somehow it turns out that there's a kind of, well, not really continuous deformation, but if you sort of, I mean, get, get, again, these Gaiota conjectures are for arbitrary M and N, and if you sort of uh, move m from zero up to n minus one, then you, you're going to move from this Whitaker story to what I'm going to tell you now. Uh, and, uh, and this actually, in this case, it's extremely simple to explain. Uh, namely, uh, this Gaiota category in this case, uh, is the following thing, let me write it and then I'll explain it. Well, is, uh, 
Well, again, we, we can work with abelian categories or with derived categories. Let me actually work with, uh, uh, let me formulate the statement for abelian categories. Uh, but then the claim is that the same thing will be true for derived categories as well. So I think you can see the perverse sheaves on the affine, affine Grassmannian of GLM. Well, I need to put Q here because, uh, uh, because uh, um, I want to do it for quantum group, but in particular, I will be able to specialize it to Q equal to one as well, but uh, I, I will have to do it carefully. And so uh, what you should put here, should put things equivariant with respect to GL n minus one of all. So here I have the group GL n minus one can be naturally embedded into the group GLM just in the most stupid way possible. So namely you can see the just matrices like this. You can see the matrices which have one here uh, and then arbitrary thing here. So this is, uh, this is just uh, GLN minus one sitting inside GLN and you can consider things inside GLN minus uh, which I correct respect to GLN minus one O. So it looks like, so from, so kind of symbolically, it looks a lot like the geometric Sataki equivalents. But it turns out that, uh, that it behaves much more like this FLE than, uh, than the geometric Sataki equivalents. Uh, so, uh, okay, so now if you want theorem, which is written now re recent, so, and again, so I should say that, uh, I'm only considering this example of m equal to n minus one, but uh, there's a, maybe I should, uh, I will uh, make some comment in a moment, uh, what happens for uh, for other m's, but right now you can see the only example when m is equal to n minus one. But in this case, we have a theorem that uh, this category, uh, well, holds both abelian and derived level, the category of reverse GLN minus one, all equivariant sheaves, um, with Q on the fine grass minor of GLM is equivalent to wrap Q GL N M N. Well, uh, the only thing is that I need to I need to say one thing careful. So somehow, of course, when when you start, let's forget about Q for a second. So if you start a category of representations of an algebraic supergroup. Category of position of algebraic supergroup, I mean, algebraic supergroup will usually act on super vector spaces. So you should consider, uh, uh, so, so the meaning of this is we can see the representation of this in super vector spaces. And then let's put also the letter S here. And the letter S here means that we can see the perverse sheaves, or we can see the constructible sheaves with coefficients not in vector spaces, but in super vector spaces. That makes perfect sense. And then somehow, I mean, th this is what you need in order for this. Uh, uh, so this is again a braided monoidal equivalence. And so here for this to be uh, truly stated, Q needs to be generic. Generic essentially means not the root of unity. Uh, so, um, and same thing holds for derived categories. So I should say that it's it's kind of funny that if you if you replace you know if you look at this uh, uh, if you look at this uh, category here if you replace GLN minus one by the full GLN then uh, uh, then somehow things become very different because first of all uh, I should say that somehow on the uh, the if you can see the corresponding derived category, it will not be the derived category of the abelian category. And second, if you if you if you try to put Q there, if, if you put a generic Q there, and as I said before, this category will just essentially collapse, it will just become the category well uh, a little bit extremely small. But for for some reason, if you uh, put GLN minus one instead of GLN, 
uh, uh, sorry, actually, I should have read, I mean, my M is N minus one, so I should write it here. So, uh, just a second. So, uh, um, so if you uh, put GLN minus one instead of GLN, then somehow miraculously uh, all the problems disappear and you get this thing. Now there's some kind of uh, also funny combinatorics here because for instance, uh, this representations of the quantum or even non-quantum just usual super group uh, are in one-to-one -one correspondence was actually a reduced representation of its even parts. So note that the even part of this group is just uh, GLN times GLN minus one. So, and uh, this should have something to do with the orbits of this group GLN minus one O on the Frankless minor of GLN. And the claim is, that, so the claim is that this group has discreetly many orbits and, uh, and the orbits are parameterized by pairs of dominant weight, dominant weight of GLN, dominant weight of GLN minus one. That's kind of, uh, uh, I mean, such things happen pretty rarely. I mean, usually if you put some, some kind of random group here, then it will not have discrete uh, many orbits on the fine grass minor, but this one does. Mm. Now, let me make some comments about this. Uh, so uh, let me uh, make some comments about the shape of the Gaiota con conjectures in general. Now, I should say that I'm only formulating this Gaiota conjectures in this GL case, although they're kind of more general. I mean, I mean there are kind of, uh, there are other say classical supergroups, for example, uh, something which is called or the symplectic supergroup, and there's some version of the Gaeta conjecture for that one. Uh, uh, but let me stick to GLM case uh, conjectures uh, for, let's see, arbitrary. Uh, M was, well, let me say less than M, because the case uh, M equal to N uh, is also somewhat different. Um, mm, well, what Gaiota does, uh, Gaiota, uh, so he tells you how to, to uh, so Gaiota produces for you some unipotent group UMN inside. Uh, it's actually, uh, well, it's inside GLM. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, uh, yeah, so it's inside GLN, but uh, you can also then, we're actually going to also then for future purposes embed it into GLM cross GLM. So somehow the embedding into GLM is, uh, uh, well, it's just the GLM part is trivial here. But uh, so, and this is normalized, this is uh, normalized by, uh, GLM inside GLM. And also you can produce a character of this UMN uh, into the additive group, which is also normalized by GLM. And then this in general is the IOTA category uh, uh, Category is the following guy. It's you can see that well. Let me consider the drive category, the category of perverse shifts. Well, let me put perverse shifts. Uh, variant with respect to GLM. Oh, semi-direct product UMN of K. Well, comma. Chi hat. So simulation as before, I should also put this Q here and I should put the fine Grassmannian of GLN. And now it's actually convenient to rewrite in the following way. It's the same as, well, I mean, especially if you're not afraid of various infinite dimensional problems, uh, this perverse shifts on respect to GLM of K, uh, semi-direct product UM, uh, N of K, also character chi hat, well, also Q. And here I should put the fine Grassmannian of GLM times GLM. 
which is actually the product of two gross minus. So this is kind of an exercise to see that this, this, this is absolutely that the logically uh, this thing considering sheaves here in grand respect this group is the same consider the same as considering sheaves in the fine gross minor product of these two groups considering so uh so so in some sense uh, so the advantage of writing it uh, this way is that here we can see the sheaves equivalent with respect to some group of k so this kind of the way i should think about this uh 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 the conjectures is this this group glm uh, semi direct product with UMN. So I didn't tell you what UMN is, but uh, I mean, there's some particular definition of it. Uh, this is, well, it's, you should think about it as sitting inside GLM times GLN, where again, the embedding of this unipotent part is, goes only into the second factor, and GLM goes into this, you can think diagonally. And uh, you should think about the subgroup, it's, uh, sure. you should think about this one as analog. Of the maximally important U. So it's analogous in, in many respects. So, for instance, has the same thing uh, U sort of in uh, for, for again for this group for uh, for U inside GLM cross GLM. So, for instance, it's going to have the same dimension as the maximally important subgroup in here. And so the point is that if M is equal to zero, this new MN will be just the maximally important and we're just going to get back to, uh, to the same Whitaker story. So, so the kind of uh, special cases is that if M is equal to zero, then UMN is, then this GLM, it disappears because it's just GL zero. This is going to be maximally important in GLM. And if M is equal to N minus one, then UMN is going to be trivial. And that's, that's another uh, case that we consider it. And, uh, and so this, so it means that, uh, so we kind of saying that this GLN minus one sitting diagonally inside GLN minus one times GLN for many purposes is analogous to maximally important subgroup in, in, in the same group. For instance, you can do uh, a simple exercise and check that it has the same dimension. So I mean, this is this is I mean analogous is not a mathematical statement, but. Uh, uh, but um, in fact, it has the same dimension. Is a mathematical statement. We can check that. Um, so, so somehow, what Gaiota does for you, he produces this uh, the sub, and then and then the rest, and and actually, they also come with a character. But again, for m equal to n minus one uh, 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 case, this character will be trivial. And then I should consider sheaves on the corresponding fine Grassmannian equivariant with this group with the character, and that recovers well if you put also q uh, in uh, into the picture. That recovers the and the corresponding category of representation of quantum. Uh, maybe I mean I have something like five minutes left. Sorry, I uh, at some point my Zoom uh, uh, stopped working, but if I, uh, can people hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me discuss briefly what happens in Q equal to one case. And this is subject of uh, our previous paper from two years ago. Uh, this is joint paper, with, uh, also Finkelberg, Trafkin and Ginsburg. So in this case, well, and again, for simplicity, let me take m equal to n minus one. So then the claim is that if you take the category of, say, perverse sheaves on with respect to GLN minus one, O on the affine grass minus of GLN, what you get is, well, you would like to say that you get representation, well, I mean, in principle, I should also put S here, just uh, because uh, uh, for the same reason as before, I would like to uh, write that they get representations of GLM 
N. But I say that when you specialize to non-generic, you have to be careful. And, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and actually, so this particular thing is actually not true. You actually have to uh, put GL underline here, and this is going to be some degenerate version of the super, super group. So, uh, and let me say briefly what this thing is. So, uh, mm, uh, so well, if you can see that the Lie algebra, uh, the corresponding Lie super algebra, this is essentially, I mean, it looks like uh, matrices of size M plus N times M plus M. So let me write them as like blocks like this. So it has here, this is the even part, this is even part, this is odd part, this is odd part. Right. And uh, well, and then I have various, well, on the level of Lie algebras, you have various super, super commutators. And so the, you introduce the, I mean, this is, this is the Lie super algebra GLM N, but then you introduce the uh, uh, kind of degenerate version of that, which means that it's same vector space, or same super vector space. And the commutators, uh, super commutators, and define, I mean, most of them will be uh, again the same, except the super commutator of any two odd elements. Uh, uh, but the um, bracket of any two uh, odd elements is equal to zero if A and B are odd. And if you, if you drag it even with even or even with odd, it's the same, the same thing as before. As, uh, but odd with odd will be zero. That's, that's a kind of degeneration of this uh, uh, usually super algebra. And then you can also do it on the level of groups of algebraic super groups. And it turns out that you get this equivalence. And this equivalence uh, uh, now, uh, maybe uh, let me just, uh, I'm tempted to uh, make the following comment that, uh, let me call this star. So star is actually a special case of uh, another set of conjectures. But this time uh, by completely different people, by Ben Svi, Secularidis, and Venkatech. And uh, those conjectures are motivated, they're kind of supposed to be categorical version of uh, a lot of known results about special values of automorphic L functions. And, uh, but the, well, that's a kind of motivation, but the actual form of the conjectures is, is the following. So, uh, uh, so, well, let me tell you, tell you what the uh, sort of left-hand side is. Left-hand side is roughly of the following sorts. You can see that some group G as before, and inside you can see that some H, which is a spherical subgroup. Sub and spherical, and spherical means, means that, that uh, uh, I think somebody's microphone is on. H uh, has an open orbit on the flag variety of G. Maybe. Let me say, give an example that, for example, this GLN minus one inside GLN minus one times GLN is spherical. And this uh, Ben Svi, Secularidis, and uh, Van Kentesh. They study, say, the derived, we get a perverse, it doesn't matter, it's a derived category of uh, H of K equivariant sheaves on the affine grass minor of G. And uh, they sort of describe what it's equivalent to, but it will take me some, I, mean, I don't want to do it right now, but uh, it's described in terms of some kind of dual groups and some representation of some dual groups. So this is uh, uh, some. Well, they have some precise conjecture, and uh, this precise, but uh, this precise conjecture uh, is based on some kind of theory of the spherical subgroups. Uh, and so this, 
and this theory of spherical, uh, and so it's based on some theory of uh, uh, spherical subgroups. Uh, uh, and the, um, so, but uh, the real sort of motivation for them is to, well, partly prove and uh, partly build up on some results about automorphic L functions. So somehow, if you look at this example, if you go back to this example that, uh, on the one hand, so so let's let's look at this equivalence. So I said that on the one hand, it's a special case of this equivalence of uh, Benzvi, Seclarides, and Van Katesh. On the other hand, it's the Q equal to one specialization of this conjectures of Gaiota, which are motivated by some completely different things and uh, by some again calculation of string theory, which I'm unable to to reproduce or to or to understand. Uh, now, unfortunately, this conjecture of being Swiss of the and Van Katesh have no known Q version. Um, and so I actually talked to them and, uh, and it is not, uh, and they're really, uh, 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 well, it's not clear how, what to do there. Um, but on the other hand, somehow the conjectures are much more general because they're, uh, well, not, well, is there are many, many situations when you can actually talk about the spherical subgroups and when there's no supergroups. So I don't really know what's going on here. And again, the most surprising thing for me is that, uh, I mean, uh, especially if you go back to this uh, 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 theorem that uh, I uh, wrote here, then again, it's, you know, if you look at the formulation, it's not something that you might expect uh, to be corollary of string theory calculations. Uh, but uh, but somehow it is, and again, uh, you know, mathematicians weren't never able to to produce such a conjecture, and uh, uh, and, and even after this conjecture is formulated, somehow uh, uh, I don't know how to sort of motivate it mathematically. So that's one thing I want to say. The other thing I want to say is that the other thing I was planning to say, but I don't have time for that, is uh, uh, is say a few words about the proof. Let me just say that the proof is similar, although slightly more complicated. Uh, 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 it's similar to the proof of uh, the original FLE by Gaysgore, and it goes through some kind of, uh, and it's build, it builds up upon, uh, uh, upon um, some work, old work of uh, Bizrukovnik of Finkelberg and Schachmann, uh, who realized uh, the categorization of a quantum group in terms of certain factorizable sheaves. And later on, Luria somehow explain why, why the work is sort of essentially trivial from factorization uh, 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 from, from algebra point of view or from E2 algebra point of view. Uh, so somehow something like that is also used here. So you can also uh, uh, do that not just for usual quantum group, but also for quantum supergroups. And so you realize that in terms of some kind of, uh, some kind of category of factorizable sheaves on, Space of configuration points on the curve, and then uh, uh, use some kind of similar argument to those of case uh, to prove this. Uh, and maybe last thing I'm going to say is that this should be an analog of this. I mean, again, well, I know how to formulate it, which is don't have, don't have a formal proof yet. Uh, when instead of uh, the category of fine dimensional representation of a supergroup, you use, uh, you get uh, uh, a category O for that, for a particular choice of a Borel sub. And I should say that in the quantum supergroup, there's a notion of Borel sub subgroup or Borel sub algebra, but uh, unlike in the usual case, not all of them are quantum. So for, for a particular choice of a Borel, you can uh, look at the uh, corresponding category O, and uh, that should be geometrically realized uh, in similar terms, but instead of the fine Grassmannian, you should use the fine flag variety. And uh, well, there's some kind of representation very complication of that because in, in this way, you actually, you can actually use that to get some character formulas for simple modules and category O for, for supergroups, which are actually not known. But, uh, 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 but I should, uh, but again, th th this is maybe not my main interest, my main, I mean, this in this kind of twofold. So one, or maybe threefold. One is to understand how physicists are able to actually produce such statements. Second is to understand the connect better the connection to this work of Bintvi, Clarice, and Van Katesh. And third is that uh, something again I don't have time to talk about, but uh, it is actually clear that these results are uh, very uh, can be used for. Uh, 
various, uh, well, for applications to something which is called quantum geometric Langlands program. But again, I don't have time to talk about this, so I think I should better stop here. Thank you very much. Any questions online or offline? So what kind of uh, physical calculations you were talking about exactly? Uh, well, you know, I, I bet I will not, not even try to start answering, answering this question. Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, it's, uh, for instance, there's this paper by uh, Mikhailov and Witten. So there they somehow, on the one hand, they have Chorin Simon theory for the corresponding supergroup. On the other hand, they started uh, three dimensional Chorin Simon. They, they, they started as dual, and somehow it's it has to do with sort of some brains uh, colliding and so on. Well, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm I mean, uh, you know, I, I made some kind of effort to understand this word, but I'm absolutely unable. But uh, but it's 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 very much connected to this work of Michal von Witten to the to paper to old um, to some well, not very old, but like from twelve years old papers by Gayota and Witten about boundary, supersymmetric boundary conditions in four-dimensional gauge theories and so on. So, uh, so for instance, even if you look at these papers by Gayota and Witten, then you see that somehow they produce some relation between supersymmetric boundary conditions and supergroups. So it's it's um, uh, boundary conditions for, for gauge theory for usual kind of even groups, but uh, some kind of interesting boundary conditions for them are related to uh, to, uh, to supergroups, and uh, and then when the, when you start the as duals of those boundary conditions, then somehow when you can actually compute them, and I mean the computation. Well, I mean the actual statement. So I can actually form a kind of physical statement, which is uh, essentially almost equivalent to uh, to this theorem. Uh, and that involves field theory. That involves four-dimensional field theory. So it's really a statement about one boundary condition going to uh, some other boundary condition are there as duality. But the, the real question is how do physicists know that somehow the, some kind of two boundary conditions are related by as duality. And for that, some kind of string theory calculations are used and, uh, and that I really, I can't explain. It's some, it's, there's something in the chin. Oh, okay. Any other questions? Only once, twice, right? Thank you very much, Sasha. No, but we have a question. Uh, we have one more Q&A. Yeah. Right. Almost ah. the buzzer. Ah, uh, the Borelsa group, which appears here, is uh, is kind of mixed Borel. Uh, so, um, uh, so in order to choose a Borelsa group, uh, essentially, uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, the the reason the I mean. Kind of one way to think about why there are different brels for uh, for for a supergroup is that I mean this is kind of uh, 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 I mean okay so if we're working with just GL thing you know brel subgroup in GLM are just flags brel subgroup uh, in in CN brel subgroup in GLM N are flags in the super vector space CMN and so I mean complete flags. And, uh, but uh, I mean, every time you add dimension, I mean, when you have a flag and then somehow you have vector space V1, which sits inside V2, which sits inside V3 and so on, every time you add one more dimension. But in the super world, you can add either one uh, even dimension or one odd dimension. Yeah. And so the Borel, which you use here is the one where, where, where when you alternate them. So when you add sort of first one uh, even dimension, then one odd dimension, then again, even, then again, odd and so on. That's kind of that's that's the barrel which is natural to use. Any other questions? Okay, right, not this. Thanks. I'll show you again.